Sanisha, thoughts on bananas? Love them. All right, let's talk about some bananas. Life was tough for the ordinary British citizen during World War II, and as we talked about before on this very channel, the general populace of Britain reacted to the Germans' efforts to bomb them into oblivion with an almost heroic amount of indifference. One thing apparently Britons couldn't deal with though back then was a complete and utter lack of bananas, an ultra-scarce resource people actively fought over. That sounds pretty weird, so yeah. could you give us a bit of context? Well, the context is that uh, at the start of World War II, Germany enacted what I like to call the fuck the UK policy, um, which basically resulted in them doing whatever they could to lower British morale, which included bombing the ever-loving shit out of every single supply ship destined for Great Britain in an attempt to either starve us into defeat or just make us really, really upset that we couldn't get any food. And I personally think that's a very bold gambit, uh, considering the kind of things people in the UK are willing to eat. And before we move on, Nisha, right, what's your go-to council estate meal because i grew up on a council estate so i am all too familiar with that we've got nothing in the cupboards let's see what we can rustle up meal um, that was probably just the day-to-day -day fare of the average britain during world war ii when most supplies were scarce if not completely unavailable and i'll open the floor with the classic the legendary beans on fucking toast which i adore specifically though beans and sausage on toast which is something i enjoy so much it is a universally known rule in any house i have to be living in that if there is a tin of beans and sausage in my cupboard do not fucking touch them because <laughs> they're my beans and sausage but there's probably people out there thinking man that sounds so lame and it is but like british people like very simple food and like nisha do you have any examples of that I think I've probably mentioned it in a video before, but I always go okay. to like the super noodles or the pot noodles, like just yeah. a quick meal. And if I have if I have any like stock cubes in, I'll throw a stock cube in <laughs> to make it taste a bit yeah. beefy. Yeah, or if I'm like really struggling for food, I'll eat that like tin of ham that's been sat oh, there no. for probably about oh, six no, months. Oh no, the spam. The thing is though, as well, what I love about Britons is that we'll have anything on bread. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, one of my favourite childhood meals, like legitimately, was. Uh, specifically, the Bachelor's Cheese and Broccoli Packet Pasta. <gasps> yeah. Like, with an extra little bit of um, uh, butter in there on bread. Specifically, white bread. So I would make pasta sandwiches, and that was my lunch. And I, to this day, treat myself occasionally with a pasta sandwich. You know, like, uh, a food I never got into, but everyone seemed okay. to, like, be crazy was crisp sandwiches. Oh, crisp sandwiches, man, yeah. I could never eat them. Like, I tried one once when I was younger and I was just like, I don't get it. The secret to a crisp sandwich is that you don't make a crisp sandwich, is that you get a packet of crisps and a sandwich and then put the crisps onto the sandwich. <laughs> okay. And then whatever sandwich you're having will be, will be enhanced by the inclusion of the crisps. And I can tell Americans now, like, fucking Britons, man. And I think the old joke is Britain conquered three quarters of the known world to plunder foreign lands for spices and then they go and eat beans on toast. <laughs> Yeah, I just love that idea of, yeah, let's starve Britons into submission. And then they look over and say, like, what are they eating? Potatoes and sausages. Oh, they must be, they must be really, really struggling. It's like, no, that's what they eat anyway. Like, Damn it! <laughs> yeah, my go-to food through quarantine seems to be jacket potato. Exactly, yeah. Just a, and that's just a potato. <laughs> like, literally, some Brits like, I'm going to sit down and eat just a cooked potato. And that's why I think it was such a bold gambit from the Germans to think, yeah, we can starve Britons in submission. But to bring it back to World War II, it was a genuine worry of the British government that um, Germany might succeed in starving Britain into submission. So there were tests done in secret uh, to see if it would be possible for the entirety of Britain to survive and thrive on food produced entirely within Britain's borders. And these tests concluded that in the absolute worst case scenario, one in which no supplies whatsoever could make it through to the UK, um, British people could live indefinitely um, on the food able to be produced in Britain, with the one side effect being that because of all the whole grain uh, bread, butter and potatoes, um, the test subject shits were two and a half times as large. Ooh. I'm not making that up. <laughs> Ow. What they did is they locked people like, basically in a cottage for a month and said, you're only allowed to eat food that we could conceivably grow 
um, in abundance in the UK, so root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, turnips, and they found, yeah, absolutely no adverse health effects, except for the fact their shits are now twice as large. <laughs> so, a small price to pay to stick it to Hitler. All right, so if I remember from history class, things never really got that dire. No, things never did get that dire, and morale-boosting items like sugar, chocolate, cream, bacon, that sort of thing, were available throughout the war, albeit in limited quantities, uh, which, fun fact, resulted in a vast majority of Britons becoming healthier because it made them make use of the only thing Britain had a basically infinite supply of, vegetables. So I'm guessing the same couldn't be said for bananas. No, bananas are noted as being specifically the one thing it was virtually impossible to get in Britain during rationing. Right, that seems so weird, like why was it yeah. so hard to get bananas? Yeah, it seems weird that specifically bananas were so difficult to get because most like exotic fruits were difficult to obtain, though not impossible. And it's, there's a famous thing about oranges during World War II were rationed and only given out to very, very young children and pregnant women. So doctors literally would be given a small supply of oranges that they had to then ration out and give to pregnant women. And this is just a side thing, but it's very funny nonetheless. And because there was very little sugar and sweets for children, um, one of the most popular things to do was give kids a carrot on a stick. <laughs> Can you imagine a more depressing treat than a fucking carrot on a stick? And like some smart ass is going to point out that carrots are quite rich in natural sugars, but fuck off if you're going to try and pass that <laughs> off as a treat. And the reason bananas specifically were so difficult to get when it was possible to get things like oranges, lemons, even in the limited quantities they were available, is because bananas had to be shipped in refrigerated ships, all of which were commandeered for the war effort, which meant that bananas became virtually extinct in Britain, to such an extent that the Queen, yes, the Queen, would hand them out as presents to people in hospital. <laughs> presents. <laughs> yeah, which I think sums up how scarce bananas were that even royalty had a hard time getting hold of them, and the Queen would hand them out as a symbol of her status and as like a treat to people in hospital. Imagine like she's wrapped like a little bow around them, like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the person's eating their banana and they turn to their kid and they've got a carrot on a fucking stick. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And bananas were so scarce during a World War II era Britain that many children, as you've probably surmised from the title of this video, grew up thinking they were a myth and didn't believe that bananas were real because when they heard stories about these weird yellow pieces of fruit that were unnaturally sweet and that you peeled strangely, they didn't believe it because how can something be so sweet? I'm just here gnawing on my carrot on a stick. <laughs> When World War II ended and they were able to get some more bananas, a lot of people, when they were first handed a banana, rather than peeling it as you would normally, um, tried to eat it like corn on the cob. Yeah, I can imagine. I, just, I knew you were going to say that. They're just going to chomp on it, like. <laughs> yeah, and they, and they thought it was quite bitter. It's like, why are people giving such a huge shit about that? So no, you have to peel it and get to the the banana inside. But people were just eating it like corn on the fucking cob. And, and this is fucking amazing. After World War II, bananas were seen as being so integral to helping restore morale for the country after you know all they've been through with rationing and all that bollocks and um, they went out of their way to get entire ships of bananas sent to the uk to hand out specifically to young children who they felt you know deserved a treat after everything they've been through which is nice yeah <laughs> i guess but it also means that we get to tell a very, very funny story. We've got to know what this funny story is. Well, as I alluded to at the very start of this video, um, bananas were very, very scarce and people actively fought over them, which I've not talked about yet, because um, when the first banana shipments arrived in the UK, um, like, it was one per household. Like, it was one for each child in each household. And a lot of parents didn't like that. And there are stories of parents nicking their kids' bananas. <laughs> And the most famous story is a British author, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Actually, no, I'm not, because the guy was a prick, as you're about to find out, Evelyn Wah, or Wow, um, who, according to his own son, when their stipend of bananas arrived, as handed to them by the local doctor, three bananas, one for each of um, the children in the household, their father, rather than letting their children have the bananas, had his mother cut them up, put them in a bowl, pour their entire ration of cream on top of them with some sugar, which was also rationed, so all the sweet stuff in the house, basically, and then ate them all in front of his children. 
What a knob. <laughs> yeah, what a oh. knob. And the best thing about that story is, according to that guy's son, even though this happened when he was very young, um, he says, like, I never, ever forgave my father for that. And in my eyes, his status as a man was forever tarnished. He's like, I fucking, I agree. Fuck that guy for stealing his kids' bananas. So, Nisha, any thoughts on what we've discussed today? Well, seeing as it's about bananas, it mm -hmm. reminded me of something, I think it was my granddad said as a joke when I was younger. You know how your parents or your grandparents tell you stories? Lies. Not stories. Let's, let's get it right. Lies. <laughs> Lies. They lie. Um, my granddad said something about bananas, which put me off bananas okay. for a bit. Um, what was but it? I eat them. I eat them now, but I still have that in the back of my mind, even though I know it's not mm -hmm. true. It's just something stupid. Okay, let's traumatise some kids. You know, like, obviously when you peel banana, the bottom bit, the very end of the banana, my granddad always said, oh, you know, the bottom of a banana is like a cat's bum. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> this, I was like You're five like, or six at the time. I was you like, do, you believe that's it, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> well, oddly enough, I also have a story about my granddad lying about bananas. Oh, God. And... Uh, uh, what my granddad used to do is he would eat black bananas. Uh, he would leave them in the fridge until they went completely black and then eat them. Ugh. And the, the lie my granddad told me is that um, if you let them go black, uh, they tasted like chocolate. <laughs> because like when you opened it up, the banana was now brown and smushy, almost like chocolate pudding. Ugh. And uh, I think the reason they do is that they're very sweet when they go brown, although they're not very appetizing. Because my granddad said that for so many years, and every time he'd get a banana, like if we get a banana as a kid, he'd go, oh, there are any brown spots on it? He'd eat the brown spots off the banana and tell us that they taste like chocolate. Like the placebo effect in my head, like it does taste like chocolate. <laughs> so now I kind of like brown bananas too. And I don't know why, but like, I'll see it. Do you know when they go off into the, the bowl? Yeah. And most people throw it away. I'm thinking like, I'm going to eat that brown banana. It tastes like chocolate. I know it doesn't. It tastes nothing like it, but in my head it does. If they go like a little bit, Brownie, if it's like bruised just a little bit, I'll be like, I'll eat around it or I'll get rid of that bit mm -hmm. and just eat the unbruised bit. But yeah, I will never eat the end of a banana. Yeah, it's just one of those, it's, it's just one of those things. And before we go, I'm, I do recall one more story about a banana that's quite funny. I'm probably not going to get another opportunity to tell. And it's a friend of mine was working as a personal trainer in a gym. He's working with a guy. Um, he's like, I'm, uh, and he can't understand why he's not losing any weight. And they're going through his diet plan. He goes, what do you have? For your diet, because while well, I wake up and have a smoothie, okay, a smoothie, that's good, that's good, that's good, good. Some supplements, and then I'll have um, lean protein, so chicken, fish, um, with rice, and maybe a bit of hot sauce on the side, yep. Yeah. And then your evening meal, evening meal will be some granola and another smoothie, okay, sure, yep, 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 yep. And then what do you have um, at night as a snack? Oh, I'll, I'll have another smoothie. And my guy's like, okay, I'm seeing a lot of smoothies mm. on this list. What are you having in your smoothies? And the guy goes, well, I use five bananas. Ooh. And my mate goes, to make the smoothie mix in the morning throughout the day, he's now in each smoothie. Oh no. And my guy's like, you're having close to 20 bananas every day. And he goes, yeah, is that bad? And he goes, have you any idea how much sugar's in a banana? <laughs> <laughs> so this guy was having like 20 bananas a day and couldn't Holy understand why he wasn't shit. losing weight. Just because you blend it doesn't mean it's good for you.